Hey guys, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, and when you do, make sure to push the bell icon so you get notifications that the new videos are out. Hey everybody, I'm JJ Johnson. You're watching Reality Survival, and I am going to talk to you today about the pros and cons of bugging out on waterways, small streams, lakes, rivers, whatever the case may be, really kind of mostly focusing on small streams and rivers, not so much lakes and swamps and stuff, but you know, some of these things may apply to those. But, um, all right, so we'll start out with the cons. Um, and I just got a little list of things that I kind of put together here when I was thinking about this. Uh, the first one is, you know, it's really probably only viable um, to do, you know, to bug out on, on a, using a waterway in the late spring, summer, and early fall. Uh, cold temperatures, high risk of hypothermia if you tip the boat over, your canoe over, a kayak, whatever it is you're using, um, you know, and the rivers could obviously freeze as well. So that's one thing to think about. Uh, number two is, is that in most small and mid-sized streams and rivers twist and turn a lot. And, uh, and that basically makes your journey longer than it would be if you were just driving on land, you know, going straight across somewhere. Uh, number three is there is consider your you're really limited on the amount of gear that you can carry with you when you compare it to like a pickup truck and a trailer or something. You know, you're having to cut down the amount of gear that you can haul with you uh, by quite a bit, but you still can carry, you know, quite a bit uh, in that regard as well. And we'll talk about that in the pros. Uh, let's see here. Number four is uh, typically currents are pretty slow and speeds are limited if you're just paddling. Now, it could be a little different if you have a motor on there, but uh, for just paddling, it's, it's going to be pretty slow going. Um, number five is you risk losing your gear, you know, critical life-saving gear, food, whatever the case may be, if the boat does tip over. Number six, from a tactical standpoint, you could be easily ambushed. Uh, if somebody sees you and they want your stuff, when you're on a river, you're confined to the river, you know, um, and you got some limited mobility. Now, that being said, you might be able to go to the opposite side of the river and keep them from getting to you. You know, there is some stuff that you can do, but you are fairly limited overall. Number seven is, is reversing direction is possible, especially if you have a motor, but paddling upstream really sucks. <laughs> uh, number eight, if you have an outboard motor, they're pretty loud usually, and uh, tra you know sound can travel quite a ways on rivers. Uh, number nine, headwinds can slow you down. The current might be taking you one way, but if the wind is blowing the opposite way, it can really slow you down quite a bit. Uh, number ten. Getting lost or taking the wrong forks in the river can waste time and be confusing. Now, generally speaking, when you're going downstream on a river, the forks are usually going to come in, you know, the tributaries are going to come in with you, and it's not that confusing. But sometimes on smaller rivers, you do see forks going off, and um, it can be kind of confusing if you don't know, you know, which, which way you need to go and everything. And you end up taking the wrong fork, and you go, and it just stops, you know, kind of goes into a little eddy or whatever, uh, maybe a little ways up the creek, and you end up wasting time and all that kind of stuff. All right. Um, number 11 is, generally speaking, your destination is going to be pretty limited. Now, if you've got a really a bigger river and it's going to go a long ways, then maybe you could have multiple destinations. But uh, as, a, as a general rule of thumb, if you know if it's a smaller stream or river, it's going to only go pretty much one place and you're going to be kind of stuck with going that way. Uh, let's see here. Number 12, I think I mentioned this earlier, sound travels down rivers a long way. So you really have to watch your sound discipline on rivers. Um, you may have to deal with a lot of insects. That's number 13. Now on the on the cons list, um, the, you know the presence of water is uh, where a lot of mosquitoes, you know, do their nesting and all that kind of stuff. So it's possible that you could have more insects. Just depends. Uh, number fourteen. Typically, it's not safe to travel on a river at nighttime. If you had good good night vision and that kind of thing, you might be able to do it if the river is a pretty tame river. But if you have a you know a stream with a lot of twists and turns and a lot of uh, log jams and different things, it's probably not going to be safe to do that. Um, number fifteen. 
portaging sucks, especially if it's a long distance. Portaging, we have to get out of your boat and you gotta, you know, take all your stuff out and carry your boat, you know, for whatever reason. Maybe it's going around a waterfall. If you're on a lake, maybe it's to get over to another side or something, uh, or in a swamp or whatever the case may be. But going long distances sucks. Short distances, not that big a deal, but long, long distance portages suck. Number 16, during combat situations, it's generally advised to stay away from rivers. And that's because there's a high likelihood of seeing people. Um, people tend to settle along waterways. Um, so, you know, it, it, is, it is a relatively comparative thing because um, you might see less than you would if you were driving on a road in an urban area. But um, as a general rule, you know, you kind of are recommended to stay away from rivers because it's a, it's a, it's a generally used as a line of communication. People, you know, get water from the rivers, they get food and fish and all that kind of stuff from the rivers. And so in, in, in combat type situations, it's probably not the best idea. Number 17, high water situations, rapids and waterfalls can all be pretty dangerous. And so that could be a problem. Okay. Now we're going to look at the list of pros. We've got 13 13 things on the pros list. Um, and I, you know, I've, as far as my experience on waterways, I don't have a whole ton of experience, but I did grow up going on a lot of canoe trips in Southern Missouri and spent a lot of time on the Current River, the Niangua, the North Fork of the White, uh, Jack's Fork. I don't know. We, we took multiple trips down into those those areas in the uh, in the Ozarks, and so most of my experience is on canoes, and that is kind of the you know the th mindset that I'm coming at this from. All right, number one pro is if you have a motor and the current's strong and the wind is right, you can make pretty good time. So if everything's in your favor, um, you know you can you can motor along pretty good and, and do okay, um, but. Some of those things that are working against you can slow you down. Number two, paddling can be quiet if you're very skilled at it, you've got the right equipment, and you're disciplined. Um, if you're not skilled and you're not disciplined, you can make a lot of noise paddling, though. Um, number three is you can carry more gear than just a bug out bag. You know, so if, if you're comparing it to walking, you can carry quite a bit of gear with you because you can, you know, probably get a couple of backpacks worth per person in there or whatever. Um, you're going to be able to carry quite a bit. But uh, as compared to a truck or trailer or something like that and a vehicle, then it's going to be a lot less. Uh, number four is you will likely encounter less people than on the roadways. And that's what I was just talking about there a minute ago. Um, in combat, it's not generally recommended because you could run into people. But in a non-combat type situation, if you're bugging out early enough before it gets bad or whatever, you're probably going to see less people on a river than you would up in an urban area going through cities on freeways and all that kind of stuff, obviously. Uh, number five. You can conserve calories and just let the current carry you downstream. You know, I mean, just take it easy, sit back. You can you can move the gear that you've got, and you really don't have to burn a lot of calories. Um, you just kind of let the current carry you. Okay, number six, you are a moving target. You're not sitting still, but you're not moving that fast. But <laughs> anyway, it, it is one thing. Uh, let's see, number seven, if you are not... if if there are not a lot of branches splitting off from the river, then navigation is pretty easy. Uh, you just need to know what your destination looks like from the river. If you haven't actually floated it before, you need to spend some time down on the river where you're going to want to pull out because um, it, things look much different from a bridge or from just overlook, you know, than they do when you're down on the river. So you really need to, to kind of spend some time figuring out um, you know, what it looks like and where you want to get out and all that kind of stuff. Okay, number eight, you can fish as you go and catch dinner along the way, you know, drop a line in the water or, you know, whatever the case may be. Um, let's see, number nine, it's difficult to track or follow when you're on a boat. It's fairly easy to spot untrained surveillance because you're generally down in a, 
in an area people who are looking over the top of ridges and stuff are going to highlight themselves it's not easy to follow you on a river without you know being noticed um, because you know the current is kind of carrying you both in the same direction so that's one thing the other thing number nine here is uh, it's difficult to track or follow when you're on a boat Oh, I said that already, sorry. Number 10 is you don't leave much sign of travel. So if you're staying on the river and you're floating, you're not leaving footprints, you're not dropping your trash off the side and everything like that. It can be difficult to track you. So that's another pro. Number 11 is you can hunt from the boat as you go along. Pretty easy to pull up a rifle and shoot a whitetail or something along those lines that's standing on a bank. And you do see if you're being quiet and, and you know taking your time, um, being you know having some noise discipline, you will see a lot of wildlife along the river, and it's easy to you know pop them. Uh, let's see here. Number twelve is you can sleep under your canoe, or if it's a John boat, you can kind of prop those up on the side and use them as shelter to a certain degree. Number 13 is it's easy to find secluded spots to camp, uh, you know, for the night. And, you know, there's a lot of little beaches usually along the sides and different things like that. They're going to be fairly secluded. One thing I will note is, is you got to watch out for private property owners and different things like that. So anyway, guys, that's just my thoughts on pros and cons of using a waterway for a bug out situation. This came up in a comment that we had on a, on a video not long ago, and so I thought it might be a good topic to discuss. Uh, let me know what your thoughts are on what the pros and cons are or what are some of the ones that I missed because I, I may have missed some. So anyway guys as always I definitely appreciate it when you click the thumbs up button when you share it with your friends on Facebook, Twitter, and Google Plus and don't forget to live the six P's. Proper prior preparation prevents poor performance. Hey and don't forget to visit the Teespring store. Take a look at the t-shirts. If you guys see anything cool then I definitely appreciate it if you support the channel and buy the one you like the best. Alright guys, see you in another video here shortly.